All right, so last time we did the parent functions and just their basic shape. Now we're going to transform them. So there are shifts and reflections and dilations. Any of that sound familiar from last year in algebra two? Like you take the graph and you move it around, it's upside down, it's over here, it's stretched and shrunk and all that good stuff, right? So little acronym for this is PIVO, which is not a word, but neither is PEMDAS or SOCATOA. You know all those acronyms we use to help us remember stuff like Hoy Vux, we went over that last time. If you don't like this, don't use it. But if it helps you, then cool. Horizontal changes, which horizontal this way, those happen inside the function. Vertical changes, that's up and down, those happen outside the function. I am gonna use a highlighter to highlight the function. If you wanna do that too, you can. If you wanna grab a highlighter, if not, you can kind of just circle it. And then you can see what's inside and what's outside. Does that make sense? Horizontal is inside, vertical is outside. Also, horizontal changes are going to affect the x value and vertical changes are going to affect the y value, which I hope makes sense because the x axis is the horizontal one. So if you have a horizontal change, it's gonna affect your x value. And if you have a vertical change, the y axis is the vertical one, that's gonna affect your y value. So it's kind of like this sort of makes sense. All right, so a vertical shift, you're gonna move the graph up or down. That's gonna happen outside of the function. So you're gonna have your function plus something. When we do an actual problem, there will be a number there, but I'm just gonna use C for all of these. Um, but it'll be like f of x plus two. And that's gonna move the graph up however much C is. So if you have like f of x plus two, it would move the graph up two, or you can subtract and that's gonna move it down, however much. So it makes sense, positive is up, negative is down. And because that's outside the function, it's a vertical shift, it's gonna affect the Y value. So if you're moving up, you would add that whatever C is to the Y value. And if you're moving down, you would subtract that amount from the Y value. Moving up or down, you just add or subtract, it's outside the function. Vertical is outside, it's gonna affect the Y value. Horizontal shifts are gonna be inside the function. They're gonna affect the X value. These are the ones that are kind of backwards. Do you remember this? How like for the vertical shifts, positive is up and negative is down, but the horizontal ones are kind of counterintuitive. So if you add something, inside the function. So like it would be inside the absolute value or inside the square root, like whatever your parent function is, it would be stuffed inside of there. Um, it's gonna be a left or right movement and it's backwards to what your intuition would tell you. So if you add something, that's gonna move it left that amount. And so you would subtract that amount from the X value. So it's kind of backwards. And so if you subtract something inside the function, that's gonna move your graph right that amount. So it'd be like right seven or right five. It's weird when we write it out like this because there's no actual numbers. When we do a real problem, it, it almost like makes more sense because you actually have numbers. So if you're going to the right, you need to add. So you would add that amount to your X value. So those are your shifts up, down, left, and right. Are we all cool? Do we remember that sort of from last year? Like heads, okay, good, heads not. All right. Reflections um, are gonna involve a negative. So if you have a negative outside of the function, outside means vertical. So if you have a graph up here, if you reflect And since the negative is outside, it's going to affect your Y value. So you're going to multiply your Y value 
by negative one, or you're gonna opposite your y value. But whatever was up here, like these are positive y values, then you can tell them that they're positive. Okay, so that's the Right, so if you have a negative inside of the function, inside means horizontal. It's going to be a horizontal reflection. So if you have you know, a graph over here, if you reflect it horizontally, means left to right, you're going to reflect over the y axis. So inside means it's horizontal, you're going to reflect over the y axis. And so you're going to multiply your y, oh, excuse me, your x value. The negative is inside. Inside affects the x value by a negative one. Well, all these positive x values here become negative. For your oppositing the x value, that's just not a word, so I don't write it that way. You're doing the opposite of them. All right, so those are your reflections. All right. I get that this is tough because one is one way and one's the other. It's like another one of those things that it's like, oh, which way is it? So just remember this. All right. Vertical dilations. This is where you stretch or shrink the function. Don't get hung up on the word stretch or shrink. Think about that last. Like do the mathematics first and then worry about that word stretch or shrink. If something's getting bigger, you stretched it. If it's getting smaller, you shrunk it. It just comes from how we talk. I wouldn't say I put this shirt in the dryer it shrunk and now it's four times its size. Do you get what I'm saying? Like it'll, it'll make, do the math part first and then decide what word you wanna say. All right, so the vertical dilations, vertical means outside. You're gonna multiply some scaled factor outside the function. So like you would have two times f of x or five times f of x. That would be a vertical and I'm gonna abbreviate vertical so I can fit all this in here. A vertical stretch by whatever that C factor is. So like if it was two, you stretched it out to twice its size. If it was three, you stretched it out to three times its size. And because that's outside the function, it's gonna affect the Y value. So you're gonna multiply your Y value by C, whatever that number is. And if instead of a whole number, if it's a fraction, so if you have a one half or a one third or a one fourth, this is like an elephant came by and sat on your graph. It's a vertical shrink or a vertical compression. You're compressing it down. So it's a vertical shrink by one cease, you know, like the, the fraction there. But you'd say I shrunk it and it's a fraction of its size. And so you would multiply your Y value by one over C. And then this last one is the toughest one because again, the horizontal ones, it's like the left and right. It's, it's backwards to your intuition. It's counterintuitive, okay? Um, so it, it's kind of like these horizontal shifts. It's sort of backwards to what you would expect. But horizontal means it's gonna be inside the function. So if you multiply by a whole number inside the function, so that's F of C times X. It's going to be horizontal because it's inside, but you have to reciprocate it. Again, it's backwards to your intuition. So it's going to be a horizontal shrink by one over C. You have to flip that over. So you have to do the reciprocal. And since it's inside, it's going to affect the X value. So you're going to multiply your X value by that fraction. So it's like this, you have a graph, imagine it here, and you horizontally compress it, like you're shrinking it inwards like this. Do you know what I'm saying? I need like an object that I can like, need like a, I don't know, a slinky or something on it. All right, and then if you have a fraction inside the function, again, you're gonna reciprocate it. So it's gonna become a whole number. So it's gonna be a horizontal stretch 
by whatever that C value is. And so you would multiply your X value by C. And we're gonna do a quick compare and contrast. What is the same about all four of those equations that I wrote there? What, what do they have in common? What's the same about all of them? Yeah, well, all, yeah, they all have an exponent of two, which means they're what parent function? But not exponential, not square root. Good, quadratic, there we go, quadratic. So what shape are they gonna be if they're quadratic? U shape, parabola, they're all gonna be parabolas. And someone said they all have a you know, factor of two, two or a one half in there. So they're, they're kind of similar, but you know, slightly different. So I wanna compare and contrast them. So when you look at this one, the two is outside the function. And I always get asked, how do you know it's outside? There's no parentheses. And again, to compare and contrast for this one, the two is outside. Do you see how this one, the two is inside? It's because there's no parentheses. All right, so since this is outside the function, it's gonna be vertical. Vertical is outside. And so it'll be a vertical stretch by two. So you're gonna take this thing and stretch it vertically. Think of, pretend I'm like holding a rubber band and I'm gonna stretch it vertically like this. All right, so vertical stretch by two. And we're just gonna draw a really quick sketch. Nothing like too intense. I just wanna put a couple of points on here so that you can compare and contrast. Now I didn't move it. It's still gonna be centered at zero, zero. Cause we didn't do like a vertical or horizontal shift. We're just stretching it. Um, so let's plug in one to the function. Again, this is what you need to be able to do without a calculator. This is like the part everyone types in on the information sheet. I'm just scared of not having a calculator. Here's what you gotta be able to do. We're gonna plug in one, you ready? One squared. Good, one, and then one times two, two that's what you need to be able to do. Does that calm you down at all? Like that's the, that's the mental math you gotta be able to do. So we plug one into that function and we get two. So we have the point one, two, and then you can have that point on the other side because it's a parabola. So we vertically stretched it. We took the graph, stretched it, made it taller, right? This one, the two is inside, so it's gonna be a horizontal change and you have to reciprocate it. The horizontal ones are backwards. So instead of a two, it's gonna be a one half. And that's why we say shrink. If you have something that's a half its size, you shrunk it. It comes from how we talk. So horizontal shrink by a half. So we're taking it and compressing it inwards. You're squeezing it this way. You're giving it a big hug. I don't wanna do the same thing. We're just gonna plot a couple of points. Again, it'll be centered at the origin because we didn't move it up or down, left or right. And we, just gonna want to, we are just going to plug in one. So again, I'll talk you through it. We're gonna plug in one. One times two, we're gonna do that first because of the parentheses. So one times two, good, two, and then two squared, four. So you get the point one, four, and then you'll also get the other point, negative one, four since it's symmetric. So when we had a whole number two, in both cases, it made the graph more narrow. But which one made it more narrow, the vertical change or the horizontal change? Which one had like a stronger effect? The horizontal change had a stronger effect. The reason why is you're scaling it inside the function before you do the square. So the horizontal change had more of a, an effect. It was a stronger effect on the graph. All right, I'm gonna start asking you because I've been lecturing at you because I need to get the information to you. Now I'm gonna try to make more of a conversation. Where is this one half, the inside or outside? Outside means it's gonna be vertical or horizontal. Good, just decide one thing at a time. People get overwhelmed because they try to do everything at once. One thing at a time, it's gonna be vertical. Vertical stretch or shrink? Good. Shrink by one half. It's like an elephant came by and sat on your graph. All right, it's gonna get compressed this way. So again, let's just do a really quick sketch. I'm not gonna plug in one this time. I'm gonna plug in two because I don't wanna have to deal with correction. All right, so let's plug in two. Again, this is what you need to be able to do without the calculator. We're gonna plug in two for X. Two squared. Good, four. 
and then half of four, two. So we get two, two, and then negative two, two, since it's a problem. All right, and then that last one there, where's the one half, outside or inside? Inside, so it's vertical or horizontal? Horizontal. And it's backwards to your intuition. So it's gonna be a horizontal, good, stretch by two, good. You have to reciprocate it. Also, it makes sense for how you talk. You stretch something, it's twice as big, not half as big. And again, I'm going to plug in two instead of one because I don't want to deal with the, the track. So we're going to plug two into uh, X. So a half times two. One squared is one. So you get the point two, one. And negative two. So when we had a whole number, it made the graph more narrow. When you have a fraction, it's going to make the graph more wide. And again, the horizontal change had more power over the graph. And it's because the change is happening inside the function. So they work the same way, but like very slightly different. The horizontal changes are more powerful. All right, so you have to be able to tell what's outside the function and what's inside the function. If you want to highlight or circle, you can do that. If not, that's cool too. You know, whatever helps you. All right, so um, first let's decide the parent function. What do you guys think about this first one? Good, rational. What's the root word of rational? Ratio, there we go. Ratio, fancy word for fractions. So this part that I'm highlighting is the inside of the function, because people are always like, is that plus three inside the function or outside the function? Well, it's inside the fraction, so it's part of that function. The negative is outside, because it's just sitting out front. So if you highlight that part, that's the part that's inside, right? So the negative is out front. You can flip over to the other side. If the negative is outside the function, which axis did we reflect over? Because it is going to be a reflection. Good, x-axis. It's a vertical reflection, which means you went over the x-axis. All right, and then the plus three is inside the function. So it's left or right, and it's kind of backwards. So left or right. Good, left, left three. That part usually goes all right. It's the graphing that gets everybody because you don't have a calculator now, okay? For the rational ones, remember what the parent graph looked like? We had the asymptotes and then the arms of the graph looks like a little hourglass. All you have to do is that, but with these transformations, okay? So since we went left three, instead of having this vertical asymptote on the axis, you're gonna shift it left three. Ms. Cool, do I need to dot that in? Yes, because since you're not plotting any actual points, I need you to dot that in. And we didn't move this graph up or down, so the horizontal asymptote is just going to stay on the axis. If we had shifted it up, we would move that up. And then watch me point to this. The parent function would have an arm of the graph here and here, but we reflected it. It's going to be flipped upside down. So instead of being up here, it's going to be opposite of that. Go ahead. Oh, did I go? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You're right. Thank you. I'm sorry. Left three. I even have left three written right there. I just modeled for you what you do if you make a mistake. Did I panic and freak out and think that I'm stupid? No, what did I do? I erased it and I moved it the other way and I fixed it. It's like not. All right, there we go. 
All right, so number two, again, I'm gonna highlight the part that is inside the function. The function is, well, what is this function? I guess I should start by asking you guys that. Good, absolute value. And so everything within the absolute value is inside the function. Whatever that parent function is, whatever's within that, that's inside. I'm gonna give you the correct number of lines for the transformation. I always get somebody that wants to like add an extra line or not fill them all up. I'm telling you that there are four transformations here. Um, let's start inside. There's a negative inside. You can look back for right now if you want to. If the negative is inside, what do we reflect over? Good, y-axis, good. You will eventually need to know them, but for right now, you can look back to the previous page. All right, and then we've got that plus two inside the function. That means left or right, and it's kind of backwards. Left two, I promise to draw this one. Mess up my left and right. All right, now the other stuff is outside the function. So since the one half is outside, it's gonna be a vertical something or other. Will it be stretch or shrink? Good, vertical sh shrink, I can talk, by one half. It's like an elephant came by and sat on your ground. It's gonna be shrunk down. And then the minus three is also outside. What's that gonna do? Down, but the up and down are always like the easiest one for everybody because those just make sense. So now we have to graph it without a calculator. All right, it's gonna be a V, it's the absolute value. You just wanna do those things to it, all right? So instead of having the center of the V shape at the origin, you're gonna go left two and down three. So normally the center would be like right here. You're gonna go left two, down three. Now, if you reflect a V shape over the Y axis, is anything gonna change? Do you get what I'm saying? Like the reflection over the Y axis isn't really gonna change anything because it's already symmetric to the Y axis. You can't turn it like that. It's not, that's not gonna change anything. Um, but we do have a vertical shrink by a half. Do you remember when we graphed the parent function, I said it was up one over one, the slope of one for each part of that. You can just use the one half as your slope instead. For the arms, of your, like the, the lines of your graph. All right, next one. What is this parent function? Good, exponential, x is the exponent. So that means that everything within here is inside the function. Here's what gets people on exponential. That three is not a transformation. That's just the base number. It's three to the power of stuff. It could be two or seven or 12. That's not causing a transformation. Okay, and I left you two lines. Okay. So transformation, we have a negative that is inside the function. It's inside of the exponent. So if the negative's inside, we're gonna reflect over what? Good, y-axis. So your smoothie shape normally looks like this. If you reflect it over the y-axis, Gonna look like this. Okay. All right, and then what's the other transformation? Yeah, down four. So normally the horizontal asymptote is on the axis. We're gonna move it down four. So instead it'll be at negative four. And then we wanna plot some points, all right? I'm gonna draw out a table. If you wanna do this in your brain, that's fine. It's not like you have to show this, but I think for exponential, it's easier if you make a little X, Y table. You can plug in whatever you want. So if you pick a number that doesn't turn out pleasant, pick something else, all right? I'm gonna start with zero. I think zero is the easiest number to start with. All right, so when you plug in zero, first thing is it's gonna be 
would be negative. You can't negative a zero, so forget that. Here's the million dollar question. What is three to the zero power or any number to the zero power wouldn't matter. You have a zero exponent. It is one, good, All right? So three to the zero power would be one and then one minus four is negative three, good. All right, what's another number you wanna plug in? Let's get a few. Three to the negative seventh, anybody? I don't think that was a good choice. Let's pick another one. But see, that's what I'm saying. If you pick something and it doesn't turn out pleasant, pick something else. Three to the negative two. Let's pick something else. What will be a good number to plug in? Three to the negative one. I don't wanna do that either. Three to the negative six, I'm making it worse. Three to the negative third. I'm gonna wait you out. What would be a good number to plug in? There we go. Well, six is kind of a bigger number. If you plug in negative six, the negatives will cancel. So that's good, but I don't wanna do three to the sixth power either without a calculator. Let's do negative one. There we go. So if you plug in negative one, the negatives cancel. Three to the one, three to the first. Three minus four, negative one. There we go. All right, now let's do negative two. If you plug in negative two, the negatives cancel. Three to the two, nine minus four, five. That's what you need to be able to do without a calculator in your head. So plot those points, connect them, and have your graph. And it's a downward swoop because of the reflection. All right, we played this on the whiteboard game. What is number four called? Greatest integer. These ones are really good for seeing the stretches and strengths, the steps, and like vertical versus horizontal. So I put two of them on here because um, it, it just makes it really convenient to be able to see exactly what's happening visually. So nothing is inside the function. There are no changes inside. All that's there is x. Both of these are outside. So what is the three outside doing? Good, vertical, because it's outside, stretch by three. And then what else? Up one. So typically the steps start at the origin, but we're gonna move up one. So this is where your first filled in circle is gonna be. Instead of at zero, zero, we just scooted it up one. And so that's where your first step is. All but we vertically stretched them by three. So the stairs are now three units apart from each other. It's a really tall stair. It's a staircase you would get quite a workout walking up. So from this open circle, you're gonna go up three. You can think of that kind of like a slope if you want. And the stairs are all now three units apart from each other. So vertically, they are further apart. That didn't bother anybody? We're all like, okay with that? All right. And then I'll put another greatest integer on here. Because again, these are nice to be able to see the stretches and shrinks. So I highlighted the function. That's what's inside. So the one half is inside. Is it going to be horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Decide that first. 
Now it's gonna be kind of backwards to your intuition. So it'll be a horizontal, good stretch by two, good. Do we feel like we're getting there? I know everyone like, there's so many notes, but you know what, you have to strike a balance. Cause if I only do like one example, everyone's like, she didn't teach this. And then if I do too much, everyone gets put to sleep. So it's like, you know, you gotta do a few of them though. All right, and then the minus three, down three. So instead of starting at the origin, you're gonna go down three, put a point. Now for this one, the steps are still only one unit apart from each other, but we horizontally stretched them by two. So now each step is two units. So they're not necessarily away from each other, they horizontally help. Ones for the stretches and strength because I think it illustrates that very nicely. You can actually like see what's happening. All right, so for these next ones, we're doing this kind of backwards. Um, before I gave you the you know the function, the equation, and then we listed out the information. Now I'm telling you what the parent function is, cube root, and what the transformations are, and we're going to write the equation. So our answer is going to be f of x equals something. And we kind of have to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. So first of all, it's a cube root. So you want to draw a cube root and just kind of like leave it empty. You want to leave some space there because we're going to put some stuff in and around that. There has to be an X in there. Like you're going to have to have a variable. Okay, so don't forget that part. Let's read through the transformations. We want a horizontal shrink by a fourth. All right, if it's horizontal, where are we going to put it? Inside, and it's not going to be a one fourth. It'll be a four. All right, so there's going to be a four inside. And then we also want to go right to. Where is that going to go, outside or inside? Inside, that's also kind of backwards. So right to means we're going to put an X minus two. Now here's the thing, you need parentheses around that to keep it separated from the four that we put in there. And that's it, that's your answer. So you're just putting it all together. But the most commonly missed thing there is the parentheses. Just make sure you put parentheses around it. All right, so number seven, um, parent function is logarithmic. So you're gonna need to write log. And I've done like log base two. It, it, it doesn't matter to me. You don't have to put anything there. Do you guys happen to remember what the base is if it's not written, like if we don't have one? Oh, good, that's impressive. I was like, not sure if anybody would remember that. Yeah, if you don't write it, it's understood to be a 10. Do you know Do you know why we have a base 10 number system? Like our numbers cycle every 10, you know that, right? Like we have 10 to zero and then one through nine, but why does it start over every 10? Like, why don't we restart like every seven? <laughs> have a base seven number system? It makes sense that it's 10, right? But why? It's just nice, but why? Like, why is it so nice? Like, why do we like it to be 10? It just like sits right with us, you know? They're digits. Anyway, gives you have 10 fingers. All right, logarithmic, transformation. We wanna reflect over the Y axis. So where is the negative gonna go? Inside. So we're gonna need parentheses there. We're gonna have to put it inside of the logarithm. So give it a hug. That's what I call the parentheses. Give it a hug. So we need a negative vertical shrink by a third. All right, vertical means that's going to go outside. Um, and if it's vertical, it makes sense. You don't have to change it. So you just put a one third outside and then shift it up eight. So where is that going to go? Also outside. Okay, so all I need inside is that negative. Um, and don't forget, you need an X. You need a, a variable there. And then we're going to put the plus eight outside at the end. So again, you're kind of taking all those puzzle pieces and assembling an equation. And then these last two, we're gonna do the same thing. It's just, I'm giving you the graph instead. So I'm just changing what you're given. Um, so what is the parent function for number eight? Okay, that is three. And now the parent function, you don't have to draw this. I'm just putting it on here to show you. The parent function would look like this. So that helps you compare um, what's been done to it. If this is what the original one looks like, how did it get changed? Reflect over Y, good. That flipped like a pancake. So reflect 
y-axis. And then also the center point is not at zero, zero anymore. This center or like starting point is now at three. So we went, which direction? Good, good right three. And then again, we wanna take all that information, put it together into an equation. So f of x equals, you'll need a square root. And then what else are we gonna put in there? Negative, good. And then to go right three, it will be minus three, it will be inside though, left and right is inside. And you need to give it a hug. The inside ones are backwards. They're, it's like against what you would normally think. So. All right, uh, last one. What is this one called? Yeah, good, cube it. Cube root is the sideways one. Again, if you wanna think like roots of a tree grow sideways, that one's cubic. All right, uh, what's been done to it? This is the um, parent function. Again, you don't have to draw it. I'm just gonna put it on here for you to compare. The center point is at the origin. Now the center point is over here. So what are our shifts? How did we move? I right, go down one. Good, left two. And then if this is what it looked like originally, but now it looks like this, what else happened? Yeah, now it could be a reflection over X or over Y because this graph is symmetric every which way. If you have a choice, pick X because then the negative can go outside and that's just a whole lot easier to deal with than inside. So if you get a choice, pick reflect X. Now, it technically doesn't matter, though. So if you put y-axis on a quiz or test, I would mark it right. It's just when we go to write the equation, it's going to be easier if you pick reflect x-axis because you can put the negative out front. Um, and I just think that's easier. All right, now it is cubic, so we're going to need to have uh, something too. And if we want to go left to what goes inside of there? X plus two, and then the down one, the minus one at the end. 